we have discovered a deeper stage of sleep. It allows us to travel into your dreams. As you descend, focus on my voice. I know. Just up ahead. We should head back. I don't want to go any further. I made it. You just think you do. Deep down, you're quivering with curiosity. Come on. Nathan wants us back. Nathan is not in the driver's seat. You brought us down here. And you know why. Well, it's locked anyway. Come on. No. Come on, just one more. I can't. Sure you can. Dream any faster, you'd be looking at permanent cortical damage. It's 
a little caution out of the question? Caution's for amateurs. Guess you were serious about getting out of there, huh? Sound. That, that wasn't like anything that I ever. What was that? Water was a nice touch, though, huh? It's a micro seizure. It'll pass, but the cumulative effects of. Forget about that. Let's, let's just focus on what happened. You okay? Yeah, I'm just a little calm. Yeah. Yeah, your body temp's two degrees below normal. Take it easy on the underwater schemas, will you? Every time I traveled into your dream, you blocked the way into that mine shaft. You, you, you've never been able to face what happened down there. Until today, when When I, you opened the door. Which I couldn't have done alone. I mean, a part of you let me do that. The point is... You don't is, know what the point is. We had a breakthrough, Nathan. That door was put there for a reason. You tried to force her through it. Nathan, I'm OK. His instincts were right. And you let him put you in jeopardy because you got caught up in his sense of adventure. No, no. We got caught up in discovery. Uh -huh. You're just pissed because we deviated from your damn protocol. Before you start extending boundaries, what did you do? Don't lecture thought? me about boundaries. I helped you create them. Well, you should try respecting them for a change. He's thinking about McCaig. He doesn't want to repeat of Stanford. Why don't you say it in English, Kate? He's scared. of major at 31? I always thought I'd make the Air Force in my life. Distinguished Service Cross for your tour in Kuwait. Then I plowed an $18 million F-16 into the desert. A touchy about stuff like that. Before the accident, uh, I started having hallucinations, nightmares. Afterwards, things got worse. I came down with fevers, respiratory problems. I thought it was Gulf War syndrome. Well, the Air Force doctors say your symptoms aren't consistent with GWS. Your anemic elevated white cell count. I think this guy's stressed. The machine just asked for a Prozac. They believe you have some type of autoimmune disease. You've tried steroids and immunosuppressive regimens. I tried everything. They told me I only have a few weeks left. My own body's trying to kill me. Nobody can tell me why. Michael Engelberg from the VA called me about you a month ago. I got to be honest with you. I don't have a clue as to what any of this has to do with my dreams. Well, dreams can manifest themselves in the waking world as tangible physiological signs and symptoms. Now, we've seen cases where they've caused blindness, even paralysis. So you're saying my dreams are killing me? It's possible. Take us back to the accident. Tell us exactly what happened. There was something in the cockpit with me. It's almost human, but it has no face. It's um, just a, a shadow there shadow no it's it's solid it, it's real but this shadow is still following you isn't it even when i'm awake now and how does it appear usually in reflections did you suffer any kind of trauma growing up any abuse 
childhood wasn't completely happy. Who's was? Your parents still alive, Ben? Dad died when I was about four, my mother about six months ago. Look, I got nowhere else to turn. I can care less about my career flying. I know that's over. I got a wife and son. I know what it's like growing up without a father, and I don't want my son to have to go through that. Well, maybe you won't have to. We'll start in an hour. So you're sort of a dream interpreter? My background's in psychology, cross-culture mythology. You see, dreams are filled with symbols and archetypes, and my job's to make sense of them. I hope you're good at it. My father used to tell me stories about the dream time, how the Aborigines believed that our dream lives were more real than our waking world. By the time I got to Stanford, I was hooked. We all met there and studied under Nathan. When he was let go, we all jumped at Why was he let go? He frightened them. Do you ever wonder what her dreams are about? All the time. Steve Turner. Ben Costigan. He helped Nathan develop most of what you see here. Yeah, but don't expect him to admit that. How you doing? All right. Hey, Vince Konefke, polysomnograph technician. This all looks complicated. But to a pilot? Well, we all have our arenas of expertise. I don't know how a stapler works. Let me boil it down. The technology is based on electromagnetic fields. See, dreaming is a neuromagnetic process. Every image or action in your dreams produces an electrical dipole, an impulse in your brain, just like in the waking world. Now, we can monitor those signals with the MEG. Magnetoencephalogram. That's this doohickey here. It works on the same principle as an EEG in that it measures brainwave activity, but it's a hell of a lot more sensitive. So hop on in. Go ahead. And the trick, is syncing up the other dreamer's cerebral magnetic fields with yours. And once that's accomplished, they're effectively dreaming the same things you are. It's pretty cool. The key to all of this is recreating your nightmare by inducing hyper REM. It's a deeper, more stable sleep stage than REM that allows us to communicate with you without waking you up. But there are also risks. Psychogenitive side effects. No pain, no gain. As you descend through the sleep stages, I'll use hypnotic induction to guide you. But once you do arrive in the nightmare, you will have to direct the course of events through something called lucid dreaming. That's being aware of the fact you're dreaming while you're dreaming. How do I become aware? Well, there are cues that you can observe on your own. Words and writing tend to appear garbled. Clocks might run backwards. That happens to me after a few beers. If you don't control the dream, you can put Kate and Steve at risk, because whatever threatens you threatens them. But it's my dream. Not anymore. 
Now, up to a certain depth threshold, if you need to communicate something back, you can do that through Kate. We'll use a form of sign language. The data glove translates my hand movements into written words. What happens if we go beyond a threshold? We have fail-safes for pulling you out. Yeah, but don't worry about that. We respect our boundaries. You get off on this, don't you? Sleep stages, entering stage four. Ladies and gentlemen, we have hyperram. Okay. Ben, you're on the train, and on the count of three, we're going to be syncing you up with Kate and Steve. One, two, three. Synchronizing 40 hertz binding rhythms. Dream. Why would he disappear? Well, he, he wouldn't, unless he's not in control. Costigan's MEG profile's diverging. Something's trying to lure them apart. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't like it. Turn back. Kate, this is triage we're talking about. If Nathan wants to play it safe, fine. Let him do it on his time. Ben doesn't have that much left. Besides, I want to check out that shadow up close and personal. Don't you? Kate, your messages are breaking up. I want you out of there now. They're too far out of range. Idiot. Steve will make sure they're all right. No, not Steve. Me. I should have had you tell him to come back. He might have listened. <laughs> Some are born to sweet delight, some are born to endless night. Do you think Ben's down here somewhere? What the hell are you doing? When I was a kid, we used to play this game. If you looked in the mirror too long by candlelight, you'd see the boogeyman staring back over your shoulder. So? So the shadow travels through reflections, right? If we can't go to it, we should just make it come to us. We'll use the shadow to lead us to Ben. Just keep looking. Good idea. Bad execution. <laughs> Cyanotic. Their signs are stable. Lisa, crash cart. Get ready to push Epi. Two CCs. Get the O2 in mass. He's suffocating. 60 over palp. He's dropping. He's in VTAC. What? All right, forget it. Charging. Come on. 20. And. Come on. Clear. He once told me there were two words he never wanted in this obituary. Natural causes. He tried to save me. gonna be surfing by the end of the week. He's critical, heart failure. Rhythm and wedge pressure have normalized, but he's still hypotensive. Whatever happened, I almost scared him to death. The biggest concern right now is ARDS. Is he gonna make it? Haven't we learned anything? 
This is Stanford all over this again. Has nothing to do with McKay. We were responsible then and we're responsible now. Steve knew the risks involved. He helped create the technology. And now he's a victim of it. I'm going back in a Costigan's dream myself. Me? Alone. I won't put anyone else in danger, but I'm not going to allow this to derail us. Appreciate everything you've done. Just trying to think of a way to tell my wife it's over. Don't tell her yet. Even after what happened to Steve? Because of what happened to Steve. Was it my fault? Was it because I couldn't maintain contact? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You're getting weaker. I ran a new blood count. We haven't got a lot of time. Why are you willing to risk yourselves for me? It's not for you. Diving straight into your nightmare was a mistake. Somehow the shadow manipulated you out of it, so I want to try something different. I want you to think of a place where you were happy, where you felt safe, where you felt in control of the environment, okay? Set. All right. You sure you want to do this? Yeah, I'm sure. destination in mind. I'll be sure you don't lose sight of it. Where are we? Bethlehem, North Carolina. I used to hang out in these woods when I was a kid. I asked Jill to marry me right over there. Oh, it was the happiest day of my life. It's me. Never. Never. I saw that word in the first dream. What does it mean to you? I had this wooden soldier. My dad carved it for me. And I was an only child. I used to make believe he was alive. His name was Never. Why Never? I, I don't know. on the train. It flew right at me.
There's no place like home. Your mother? Dad? Never. He was in the first dream. When was the last time you saw Never? I buried him. I was about eight or nine. My mother said I was too old for make-believe friends. She was gonna throw him away. Over here. How can a shadow be me? I don't have a death wish. I want to live. Nathan. Nathan. Yeah. His platelet count's dropping up the scale. There's evidence of hemolysis. Internal hemorrhaging? No sign yet. Talking days? I called the airport. Your tickets will be waiting at the counter. Why are we going to North Carolina? We've already been there in my dream. We have to link what happened in your dream to what exists in the waking world. Something's buried in Bethlehem. Something a part of you doesn't want us to dig up. said the words could be garbled in the dream. But we're not dreaming. The shadow traveled through reflections, through mirrors. You see, we're dealing with analogs and hidden meanings. Now your parents were moving backwards. That's another reverse image, another reflection. Turn the letters around. Moving. That clears everything up. Who named the soldier? My dad. Did he tell you why?
I just don't understand him. No bedside manner went out with lead and gas, but... He used to be different. In the early 60s. Mm -hmm. That's right, Bethlehem County. You two together? Oh, is that... No. Really? Wish you were. I have this annoying habit. I never get involved with married men. That woman you saw at the Institute, one in the coma, she's Nathan's wife. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Dr. Ellis, do you remember him? He's known my family for 50 years. He delivered me. Well, I think we should go see him. Dr. Ellis, you delivered Ben about 30 years ago. Well. You turned out all right. He delivered lots of children, didn't you? Oh, lots of them. Did you ever deliver another Costigan child? There was no other child. I was the only one. I told you that. Yeah, just give me a second. A boy, Dr. Ellis, named Reuven. Reuven Costigan. Mary's other son. You delivered him, didn't you? Do you remember Reuven, the oldest? You and I are both doctors. With all our training, as much as we try to pretend we're perfect, we make mistakes. Tragic mistakes. And we hurt. So we try to forget. But we can't. Dr. Ellis was what happened to Reuven a mistake. I had to keep the secret. You can let it go now. Mary's secret? Yes, yeah. That's right, Mary's secret. And you kept it for all these years. That's why the county clerk has no record of Reuven's birth. She loved both of them. Of course she did. And sometimes love isn't enough. What happened to Reuven? I had to tell Mary. Tell her what? That she didn't have enough to give. There couldn't be two. That's right, there couldn't be two. October 2nd, 67. Reuven. Thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. Genesis 49. Reuben was the first son of Jacob. Benjamin was Reuben's younger brother. That was the day I was born. My twin. Your father said something to us in the dream. Some are born to sweet delight. Some are born to endless night. He was trying to tell us that you lived, but your twin died. An identical twin, and we wouldn't be dealing with reflections. Now, he most likely died in utero. Placential insufficiency. Your mother couldn't provide enough nourishment to support bringing both of you to term. And you were the stronger one. We have to go back into your dream, Ben. Why? Isn't it enough just knowing what the shadow is? The shadow was created in your subconscious. That's where it has to end. It's survivor's guilt, Ben. In the dream, it manifested itself as a shadow. In the waking world, it attacked your immune system. But it's my brother. No, it's not your brother. It never was. It's your guilt. That's why fighting it won't work. You have to recognize it for what it is.
sniff. Feels like one of those phantom limbs, you know? You can't see him, but he's still there. He's gone now, Ben. Well, think of all the money we'll be saving, huh? Breaking mirrors gets expensive. Not to mention all the bad luck. Yeah. Why did all this happen now? My brother's been dead almost 30 years. You said the nightmare started six months ago, when your mother died. Now, on some unconscious level, you've always known you had a twin, but it took your mother's death for that knowledge to work its way to the surface. Your said rate has normalized. Your ANA is negative, so by all measurements, your condition's gone into spontaneous remission. Thank you. So what's next for you, man? Well, I've always wanted to make a difference. It's not possible now, at least not with the Air Force. But... Well, it could be. With us. We should talk. Generous falls, sharp signal crests. You have lovely irises. Thanks. It's been rough this year with the mustard seed fungus and all. Do you have any spurious? No, I'm sorry. I've got some nice Siberians, though, as well as the miniature tall beardeds. The MTBs are six for a dollar. The blooms are a little smaller than the BBs. They make good table arrangements, but they also work well in wedding bouquets. I might be willing to make a deal on the Siberians. Something wrong? No, no. did you do that for? You could have hit her. Yeah, well, I didn't, did I? Have you ever had a dream where you're falling? Well, everyone knows that you wake up before you hit the ground, right? That you can't actually die in your dreams? Well, they're wrong. In a dream, anything is possible, even death. The laws of physics don't apply. Black is white, left is right. You can walk through a door and wind up on the other side of the world. You can breathe underwater. You could even fly. Huh. By learning the rules. Rule number one, the host always controls the landscape. My dream, my world. And you, you're just a visitor here. Do you trust me, Ben? Sure. Well, come over here. You mean onto the ledge? Yeah, onto the ledge. Now 
what? Let yourself fall. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Come on, you said you trusted me. Now prove it. Yourself having to fall like that. The odds were good. Where are we? Australia. This used to be a holy site for the Aboriginal people. And these are the gods who dreamed the world into creation. My parents were anthropologists and they used to come down here and study the drawings. And one night they brought my brother and me down here, and I was the only one who walked out. What happened? I don't remember. I never saw them again. No one has. So I come here all the time now in my dreams. At first, I was only able to make it to the mouth of the cave. But then, little by little, I managed to make it farther and farther in. Now, why make yourself do it at all? Because I need to remember. I need to face my fears. And that's what this work's all about. That's why people come to us. You did that. And I still need to. So, I'm gonna leave now, and I'm passing this dream on to you. You're in the driver's seat. You are the host now. So this place and everything in it is yours. And I want you to find your way back out. How the hell am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Kate? Hey, congratulations, you just made it through your first lesson. Yeah, not bad for a rookie. That was, uh, that was pretty impressive. Steve, Steve. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm well, long time no see. Yeah, yeah. This is my partner, Detective Burke. Hello. I take it you two know each other? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm Detective Fusco Homicide. Dr. Bradford helped me with a case a few years back. That was a long time ago, the Sandman. Right. Well, um, I've got another one for you. A real nightmare this time. Dr. Parigi. His name is Conrad Fibes. He's killed five people that we know of. There may be others. He preys on women. He kills them, and then he buries their bodies in a shallow grave. According to the coroner, all the victims had signs of hypothermia. We think that he might be suffocating them in some kind of walking freezer. Yeah, but you don't know for sure? Yeah, we haven't been able to find a place where he kills them. We searched his home, his work. How did you catch him then? All the victims had traces of pollen on their hands and in their mouths. As it turns out, Fibes is a driver for a flower shop. He'd encountered each of the victims while making a delivery. Come back in a few days, kidnap them, and throw them in the delivery van. That's where the traces of pollen came from. You're positive it was him? Oh, it's him, all right. When we tracked the queer ball down at the flower mart, he ran, tried to grab another woman hostage. If that wasn't enough, we found one of his victims' purses in his van. We have reason to believe a sixth victim of Rochelle Davis is still alive. Vibes is dying. Thanks to Burke here, he's got a bullet lodged in his head. Looks like a subarachnoid hemorrhage. The bullet must have nicked an artery. I'll give him a day, at most. That's more than the other doctors have given him. They say he'll never regain consciousness. And even if he did, I doubt he'd tell us where Rochelle Davis is. So where do we fit in? We need you to get inside his head. We need you to find her before he dies. Vicki Bolton, 27, a single mother. Sandra James, 20, a waitress. Becca Levine, 
32, a legal temp. Jennifer Dodds, 35, married, four children. Faith Straczynski, 25, a graphic artist. And Rochelle Davis, 22. All redheads, blue-eyed, all relatively young. Davis was kidnapped yesterday. If Five stays true to form, he won't have killed her yet. You said he buried them in shallow graves. Were they disfigured in any way? He blinds them. Scopophobia, fear of being watched. If I had to guess, I'd say he's been killing to reverse some scene of humiliation. Maybe going back to his childhood. Now, he doesn't like looking at himself. He's ashamed. And it's possible that he transfers that shame onto others. His mother may have been a prostitute or someone working in the sex industry. Do we really need to be giving the guy a shrink session now? We should be out pounding the pavement, not sitting here listening to this crap. This business of dream sharing, whatever you want to call it, is just a little tough to swallow. OK, so back to the crap at hand. Vibes won't be lucid. Lucid? What does that mean? That means being aware of the fact that you're dreaming while you're dreaming. When you're lucid, you're in control of the dream, and Fives won't be lucid. So he won't know he's dreaming, but we will. And we may be able to use that to our advantage. How? We can direct the course of events in his dreamscape. We can nudge him in certain directions using hypnotic induction, but we need to find a way to start at the place where he lost consciousness. The flower mart? We'll meet him there, and we'll try to engage him in some role playing. You want to play bait? I've read the files. I know what he looks for in a victim. I know what he wants, and if I can be that person for him, I might be able to get him to take us to the place where he kills them. Is that safe? Well, Ben will go into the dream with her, and as soon as Fives picks her up, if Fives picks her up, he'll follow them, and at the same time, we'll retrace their steps in the waking world. How do we know where we're going? Well, we can talk to Kate while she's under, and uh, she can send messages back via the data glove. So if she wants to send you some information, directions, for instance, uh, you'll be able to read them on this wireless PDA. It's a personal digital assistant that I've modified to have a direct uplink to the lab here. Looks like a Game Boy to me. Nathan. Yeah. You really think I'm ready for this? Yes, I do. Well, Fibes is a killer, and Kate needs somebody in there with her who can think on their feet. You know, somebody with combat experience. And your Air Force background makes you the perfect candidate. Don't sweat it, you'll be all right. But with all due respect, there's a big difference between his military training and, and dropping into somebody else's dream. He's just gonna be following her. Kate will be in there with him. She'll make sure he gets out in one piece. No, I mean, besides, somebody's got a chaperone Kate and Lacey back there. And given your injuries, you're certainly in no condition to do it. What am I going to do? That leaves me. If you weren't so sensible, I'd have to smack you around a yeah, little right. bit. Just hook him up. That's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you know what you're getting into, Costigan. Uh, you and me both. Yeah. Okay. Just remember this. You're diving into somebody else's dream this time, all right? Not your own. And you're just a visitor there. It means every other person that you encounter in that dreamscape, every other object, is just another part of our homicidal vegetable subconscious. OK. Here comes the needle. And if you promise not to cry, I'll give you a graham cracker afterwards. Mmm. Are you all set? Uh -huh. OK, let's do a test run, sign something. <laughs> okay, you read me, Vince? Loud and clear, Nate. Okay. Let's do it then. Steve, we're at the flower mart. Is Five stabilized? Yes, sir. He's just dropping into Hyper Rim now. OK, send him in. OK, locking alpha rhythm coherence on three, two, one.
Nothing like a little brain turbulence to shake you up. Okay, you all right? Dream? Son of a gun. He sees the world and people are just objects in it. So how come you're a redhead? Because this is how Fives would want to see me. Seductive, aloof. How do I look? Like you should be standing on a street corner. we in Technicolor? Because it's the only place that feels real to him. Don't you worry, I'll be right behind you. Generous falls, sharp signal crests. You have lovely irises. Thanks. It's been rough this year with the mustard seed fungus and all. Do you have any spurious? No, I'm sorry. I've got some nice Siberians, though, as well as the miniature tall beardeds. The MTBs are six for a dollar. Their blooms are a little smaller than the BBs. It's a little overwhelming, isn't it? I'm sorry? The flowers. I just came back to the <laughs> Now I'm here, I don't even know where to begin. You don't seem lost, though. You seem to know exactly what you're talking about. Well, that's how I make my living. Really? Well, maybe you could help me, then. My name's Kate. I'm Conrad Fibes. When is your wedding? June. We're having it outside. Oh, well, June is a hot month, lots of sun. You want an arrangement with a lot of perennials, something that holds its bloom. Well, Kate must be doing something right. Monkey Boy's testosterone level just spiked. I have an idea. Why don't we go back to your shop and you could design something for me? I'd love it. I I'm parked nearby. You could follow me. Actually, I caught a taxi here. Do you think you could give me a lift? Perfect. Flowers are your world, aren't they? 
I love them. Their history, their meanings. Take the iris, for example. The Greeks used to place them on the graves of their loved ones. That's because the goddess Iris used to escort souls across her rainbow bridge to the afterlife. It's beautiful. going, Kate? I don't get it. How can she be talking to him? This isn't even real. Of course it's real. No, no, no. Real is some jacked up kid waving a knife at you. This is... I don't know what this is. It's just voodoo. Well, you probably wouldn't be saying that if you were in there with him. Yeah, thank God I'm not. I prefer my reality rock solid. Sounding just a little defensive there, Detective. No, not at all. I just think it's a matter of common sense. All right, say someone breaks into your house, for instance. And what are you going to rely on, that little computer thing of yours or your gun? I don't own a gun. <laughs> My point exactly. Just a headache, that's all. Daffodils are also associated with the dead. They grow in the underworld, you know, lining the path to Hades. That's how Persephone was abducted. She followed the path and got separated from her friends. You're not listening to me! Blood pressure pulse just shot way up. Okay. Okay, can, can you hear me? What, what's happening? Okay. Kate? Okay, can, can you hear me? What, what's happening? Okay? What's happening? Uh, we lost contact with Kate. Uh, she's not responding. What about Ben? It looks like they've been separated. I'm tracking him now. All right. Why'd you pull me out? We didn't. Something's wrong. I 
I said stop looking at me. I'm not. Then why do I still feel your eyes on me? Guys, we got a major problem. Vibes is lucid. He knows he's dreaming. Stop looking at me! We have to get her out of there. Can we just tear these off? No, 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 no. It would be a bad idea. If you pull her out like this, you fry her brain. All right, then send me back in there. It stands to reason I'll drop off somewhere near them, right? Maybe I can catch him off guard. Maybe you, I... you just don't get it, do you, Costigan? I mean, you just don't get it yet. He is lucid now. Lucid. I mean, that means in this dream, he is God. She's not getting out of there unless he lets her out. Who are you, and what are you doing in my dream? Is this where you kill him? What are you, some kind of a detective? You know about me? Who are you? Who are you? Is this why you killed them? What's going on, Vince? Talk to me. Vibes is lucid. Somehow he's thrown Costigan out of the dream. So it's a big deal. It's just a dream, right? No, no, it's not just a dream. She could die in there. Take us back. Take us back to the Institute. Nathan, Costigan wants to go back in. Well, do it. Do it. It's her only chance. Just patch me through to Kate. There's a chance that she can still hear us. You got it. And I am sinking Costigan back in now. Nathan, if you can hear me, don't panic. Vibes is lucid. We're sending Costigan back in. I am dreaming, aren't I? That's how I was able to do this. Did you really think I wouldn't be able to tell I was dreaming, Kate? Did you really think I wouldn't feel you inside me? I kicked your friend out, you know. I wished him away. But you, you, I think I'll keep her. Okay. Come on, Kostka. Don't panic. I know why you took their eyes, comrade. And you were right to do it. Deserved to go blind, and they deserve to die. You don't believe that. You're just trying to confuse me. No, I understand. I know you. I know everything about you. They led you on, didn't they? They pretended to like you, all those women. They were whores! Looking at me with her eyes, making me look inside myself. Just like she did, right? Your mother. She made you feel shame. She made you feel dirty, didn't she? It wasn't your fault, Conrad. Anyone would have done what you did. Anyone would have punished them. Did you punish Rochelle Davis? Haven't yet. Was going to. Is she here? I'll show you. You took my eyes away, Conrad. How can you show me if I'm blind? Come on, Kate. You can do better than that, can't you? You think you're talking circles around me, and all you're really doing is pissing me off. You want your eyes back? Fine. It's not gonna help you anyway. I'm in a maze. How do I get out of the maze? In the real world... Keep your hand... On the left side of the wall, 
follow it wherever it goes. Eventually, it'll lead you out. Wait a minute, we're not in the real world, we're in the dream. Black is white here. Left is right. Yes. It's someone else, isn't it? Someone who makes you do these things. How do you know that? Because the killings don't feel like you. You want beauty, you don't want ugliness. You just want someone to appreciate you just as you appreciate your flowers. Now, this friend of yours, I don't think he really understands you, not like I do. If he did, he wouldn't make you do these things. Show me Rochelle, Conrad. Show me how he makes you kill them. Did you really think you could fool me, trying to make me think you understand? It's not your fault, Conrad. Anyone would have done what you did. Vince, she's back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a reading. Hang on. Something is coming through. Here we go. Nathan? Nathan, she's back online. Oh, here we go. We're back. Greenhouse? Uh, there's no greenhouse around here. No, we're in a dream, remember? Greenhouse is a symbol. A symbol for what? Wish fulfillment, growth, uh, a place where something fragile can live. Or maybe we'd want the opposite. Um, a place where dreams die. A mortuary, for instance. Oh, come on, give me a break. You're just guessing. Yeah, now. I am. No, wait a minute. There used to be a funeral home around here. Where? A few miles back. Turn around. This Detective Fusco. I'm heading west on I-90. I need backup and an ambulance to meet me at the old Heathcliff funeral home. Surprise, Kate. You're the one who figured out Fives had an accomplice. Too bad you couldn't figure out who. Gotta hand it to you, Kate. You were right about the mother. Being a prostitute and all. Only trouble is, she was my mother, not Fives. Careful. What do you say we make you a little bet? I'll bet you a dream bullet can kill you just as well as a real one. <laughs> It's one of those mind over matter things, Kate, isn't it? I think. Therefore, I'm dead. Uh, Nathan, check your PDA. together. We're best friends, like brothers. We're two sides of the same coin, see? Listen to me, Conrad. Burke isn't really here. He's just a figment of your unconscious. I know that. I'm smarter than you think, Kate. The only thing real here is me. 
And you, of course. Burke is just a puppet. Isn't that right, Burke? Monkey see, monkey do. I can do anything I want here, can't I? Anything. What happens if you die in my dream cave? Do you know? There's only so many places to hide in here, Bradford. Sooner or later, I'm gonna find you. Pipes used to work here, ain't that a kick? He made flower arrangements for the dead. Bradford? You gonna shoot me? Huh? This isn't one of your dreams, Bradford. This is real. Real gun, real bullets. <laughs> You're a doctor. You know what a gunshot does to someone. What kind of damage it really causes. So what do you think? Huh? Think you got the guts to do that to me? I'm gonna bet you don't. I'm gonna bet you're all talk. Oh. Can you breathe? Yeah. Can you breathe? Yes, yes. I'm okay. I'm okay. Fine, Dan. Okay. Stay on your side. Suppression pattern on fives here, Steve. Steve, he's dying. He's slipping away. Kate, Kate, fives is dying. You have to get out of there now. Conrad, listen to me. You're dying. You've been shot in the head. No more games, Kate. It's not a game. Burke shot you, and the bullet penetrated your right hemisphere. You're lying. No, I'm not. Your middle cerebral artery's been severed. Shut up. You know I'm telling the truth. You can feel it. Shut up. Shut up. The bleeding is putting pressure on your brain stem. That's why you're having headaches. You're seeing things. No! It's okay. It's okay. Nobody's gonna hurt you. It's okay. It's 
It's over. It's over. Yeah, I'm gonna take the tape out of your mouth, okay? It's okay. It's okay. Here we go. What happened? He couldn't face his fear. What about Buck? Oh, he collapsed when the glass fell. Kind of like a puppet with the strings cut off. Come on, we better get out of here. I want to give you something. To remember me by. I got the girl out, too. About fives. Uh, he's dead. Yeah, it happened just a second ago, just as you were waking up. they were tandem killers? Well, it's rare, but it does happen. Two people sharing the same delusions simultaneously. There's a mental disorder called folie de, which literally means madness between two. How did you know there were two? The killings didn't make sense. The pattern was all wrong. Parts of the killings were very organized, the way the victims were chosen, for instance. But then other aspects were very disorganized, like the mutilations. I still can't get over it. You know, you think you know someone, and then Is they Is Burke won't. gonna live? Fortunately for him, you're not the best shot. You missed his heart by about an, an inch or so. Found you out here. Yeah, I'm just getting some air. What's wrong? I keep seeing his face every time I close my eyes. I can't help thinking about what he said to me. Giving him something to remember me. You gotta keep that out of your head, Kate. Go home, take a bath, have a glass of wine, do whatever you need to do to relax. If you can't sleep, give me a call. I'll count sheep for you. I'm sure your wife would love that. Hey, I'm serious. I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for you. A call in the middle of the night is the least I can do. Hey, I trusted you. How come you can't do the same? Because I'm a hypocrite. Well, even hypocrites need to sleep sometimes. Let yourself fall, Kate. I'll try. Promise? <laughs> 